Today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, the NRSV. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Carrie, we thank you for coming today, and we look forward to hearing your message. Good morning. It's good to be with you again. Um, I spoke with Sue yesterday morning in preparation, and I was kind of eager, wondering if I was going to be um, led by Sue Nofsinger or Mama Sue. Because last time I was here, there was a Mama Sue telling me I better come for spaghetti. Um, alas, I am six months too early or too late for Mama Sue. But either way, I'm glad to be here. This has been the year of the Lego in our home. Now, to be clear, we have had Legos in our house for years now, but somehow the planets have aligned just so, or the interests of our children have matched in just the way that Legos are a really big deal right now in the Eichler household. Alistair, our middle son, turned 10 this year, and he had a Lego birthday party. Now somehow, all of the other 10-year-old boys gave him not just Legos, but Minecraft-inspired Legos. Some of you know what Minecraft is. It seems like for the entire month after his birthday, our dining table was not just a place to eat, but a place to create, build, imagine, destroy, get frustrated at, cry around, celebrate, and marvel at. Actually, in that regard, it wasn't much different than most of our mealtimes at that table. Now, most of you are familiar with these timeless toys, though I admit I was never much into Legos as a child. My childhood creativity moved in other areas. So reacquainting with them as an adult has been a bit challenging. As far as I'm concerned, there are two types of Legos. First, there are the Legos that come with the plan, the Hogwarts castle the Millennium Falcon, the Minecraft pirate ship. These Legos come in a box with a picture of what it's to become, and inside there is the step-by-step instruction manual with all the pieces needed to create the masterpiece. And how you put it together is all right there. It's clear, it doesn't even have any words. It just has pictures guiding you step-by-step. It can be a truly universal experience where language is not even needed. And then the second type of Lego, in my mind, is the big box of random pieces. Thousands of blues and yellows and reds 
just waiting to be assembled, created by the bidding of the young master, the architect of dreams, and the pudgy little fingers of a child Michelangelo whose masterpiece is only but hours away. In this box, it doesn't matter what isn't there, according to any instructions, what matters it was is there. This box is complete creativity, imagination, unbridled possibilities. I hate this box. <laughs> I want a plan. Give me the instruction manual and I could happily Lego to the boy's heart content. Give me a bunch of random primary colors and I panic. What if I can't make something cool enough? What if it's stupid? What if it doesn't make sense? What if I'm not creative enough? What if the end result, which was supposed to be a unicorn merry-go-round, actually looks like Dante's third circle of hell? It's just too much pressure. With a plan, I know I'm doing it right. With a box of random pieces, well, anything can happen. Well, of course, that anything could be something amazing. Now, some of us like a plan, and some of us like the possibilities. Now, I don't mean to imply that they are mutually exclusive, that you can't want plan and possibilities. But, because for me, having a plan ensures the possibilities. But it's likely that most of us struggle with either being more spontaneous or with the limits of structure. We lean slightly more towards plans or creative possibilities. I wish I was more a possibilities person, but at least when it comes to Legos, I take a plan every time. Now, as I look for the scripture today, and you may have wondered how I was connecting fish and Legos, I do see a connection between the struggle for plan or possibilities, or the struggle of plans and the possibilities of Legos, and the call story of the fishermen. But before I get into that, let me just say that I think in our scripture today, Jesus is making quite a bit of assumption here. Jesus assumes, first off, that if he sits down in Simon's boat, a complete stranger, Simon will not chuck him out, or at least call for help. He assumes that if he tells Simon to go out into the deep, that Simon will do what is asked of him, and not consider this potential maniac may try to throw him overboard. Jesus assumes that Simon will listen to him and put his net into the deep in spite of Simon's own experience that told him he would catch nothing. He assumes that after their minds have been blown from this amazing thing that happened, that the nets that were empty only moments before were now bursting at the seams. Jesus assumes that after all that, that Simon, James, and John would understand some strange metaphorical reference to catching people, understand enough that they would actually follow him. And not just follow him, but leave their boats on the shore and leave everything behind. Jesus sort of dumps a box of Legos on the beach and says, here, start creating. The only instructions, head out into the deep water and put your nets down. Now you know, Simon has to be wondering what this is all about. What is this freeloader on my boat expecting to happen? And we can almost expand on, hear him expand on that, like talking to a chaotic pile of Legos. What if it doesn't work? What if it's embarrassing? What if I fail? What if I get laughed at? What happens when we don't know what the end result will be? Well, Lauren Dow Wagner, in an article in the Christian Century, reflects 
that instead of calling out Peter's unbelief, Jesus simply responds, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. Instead of focusing on Peter's lack of trust, Jesus highlights the continual call to catch, even when the results are a mystery to us. She continues that this story is a reflection of real life and the real life of faith. Much of life, she says, exists between the work and the result. Basically, life happens between the plan and the possibility. And yet we rarely, if ever, are promised a clear result to our work. But that doesn't seem to matter to Jesus. When he asks Simon to put out into the deep water, he merely asks Simon to do what Simon knows how to do. He doesn't ask Simon, the fisherman, to weave a basket or to debate with a rabbi. He asks Simon to do what Simon is meant to do. He is a fisherman, so he calls him to fish only deeper. He knows how to cast nets for a catch. He knows the sea and the life within it. He knows how to do this. It is the work he has been equipped to do. So this time, when Jesus asked Simon to do his job, the result, the catch, is left up to Jesus. In fact, Jesus, in a weird Jesus-like way of setting an example while he is teaching a lesson, sort of shows us what he's talking about because he himself catches Simon, James, and John, if you will, doesn't he? Jesus himself did it by going deeper with them. Jesus himself did it by going to them, sitting with them in their own space, loving them through disbelief, assuring them in the midst of fears, and lo and behold, they wanted some of that. They wanted to come along. But really, they weren't caught by any means. Instead of being caught, they were being created. They were being created into disciples. They were being created into healers. They were being created into transformative figures that would go out and take that creating power to others. Without an end picture in sight, they were infused with confidence about their power, and scripture says they were fishers of people. Essentially, without an end picture in sight, they are infused with the possibilities to go out and be creators of new beings, fishers of men. I sort of feel we, in many congregations that I'm connected with, likely yours as well, we face this whenever challenge faces us. You start on a creative process. You have some instructions, but it also feels like you have a lot of random pieces of Legos or casting your boat into the deep without any real idea of what's going to happen. And that can be super scary. It's terrifying and it's liberating. But to be liberating, we, and I'll switch my language from you to we, because I am part of you and we are part of one church. We have to let go of a few things and claim a few things. First, we likely have to throw out the instructions for how things have always worked or have been done because then is not now and now will not be the future. So as hard as it is, we do need to see the creative possibilities of looking at a bunch of random pieces. And to do this, we need to adopt an openness of being creative together in order to go deeper and create more authentically. 
And second, we have to claim a bit of the Simon Peter lesson. We have to hear God calling us to be more of who we have been made to be. And you know what that is. It's in your mission statement. As a congregation, recognizing we are God's beloved in Christ, united in the spirit, Creekside seeks God's love in our lives. So we seek God's love in our lives so we will go deeper in that search, asking questions of ourselves and one another and God and scripture maybe more deeply than we would like or feels comfortable. We are called to seek, so we will go deep. Creekside celebrates God's love and vital worship, so we will go deeper, making worship a place that explores all of God's ways, God's connects with us, trying new things boldly, claiming beloved practices with new vigor, We are called to celebrate, so we will go deep. And Creekside shares God's love through acceptance, service, and witness. So we will go deeper and be vulnerable enough with each other to get really real with each other, recognizing that we have all been the outsider who has been called into the life of love. But honestly, it's not just enough to say these things. We have to be these things. Because finally, we have to receive and accept Christ's mandate to go out to catch people. Go out to create new beings. Because really, the fish didn't jump into the nets because the nets were there. The fish didn't jump into the nets because Simon Peter made a statement that the nets would be a welcoming place for fish because let's face it, nets have not been very welcoming of fish or to fish. Simon did not become amazed by staying on the shore when he was scared. Simon was not transformed because he played it safe. He was transformed because he went into the deep. If we are to move forward with a Simon spirit, then we have to let a lot of things go. And by letting go, we can find, we can go deeper. What that looks like, the result, is left to Jesus. And really, we know how to get there. We will seek God's love in our lives. We will celebrate God's love and vital worship. We will share God's love through acceptance, service, and witness. Because we are God's beloved in Christ, because we are united in the Spirit. It's not easy, but it's who we believe we are meant to be. So let's be it. Let's create Let's go deeper. Amen.